whoa <laughs> quite a bit already a very loaded trailer that one is and uh, with me here in studio i have maya Leko, who's the producer and director of that film and also karisa kamangu who was the main character in the film as well karibuni sana in the documentary rather karibuni sana to the show Wow. And uh, this f uh, documentary, The Letter, is actually the official selection from the Oscars committee here in Kenya to the Academy Awards, the Oscars. <laughs> okay. So that's a big deal. Congratulations to you guys. Thank that you. must be a tremendous feeling. Is this your first nomination or selection as part of the Oscars? Definitely. It's the first film. This is, this is myself and my husband's first feature film. Okay. And first selection to the Oscars. So wow. we're truly humbled and honored. What a start. Yeah. And for you, Karisa Sasawe was here. Marango Kwanza Kwa movie, film. Yeah. Marango Kwanza Natayari was Shafika. Imagine. Do you mungu ni mkubwa? Mungu mkubwa. Kabisa. Kabisa. Hi Abasi, um, tell us a bit about what the letter is about. I mean, that trailer was, was pretty loaded. Um, we're seeing things about a community and these warnings, you know, there's some sort of strife that's going on. For those who are really clenching at their fists as they were watching it, please explain what, what it's about. So I'm going to just go a little bit further back. Um, so Chris, my husband and I, we started this journey um, because we heard about the story of Mekatilili Wamenza, mm -hmm. who was a female freedom fighter from the coast. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 70, she was revolting against the British, accused actually of being a witch also by the British to turn her against her people. Mm -hmm. And then now a hundred years later, essentially the same thing is happening at the coast, which has been created by many forces. Um, it's been created by capitalism, by religion. Um, and this story for us, like it follows a single family, the Kamango family, who were so truly humbled for them opening their house to us mm -hmm. and their story. Mm -hmm. And it was Nyanya, 95-year-old <sighs> grandma, um, together with Karisa, of course, who are the ones who are leading this film. Okay. And through their story, um, and the Nyanya who's been accused of practicing witchcraft by some of her stepchildren, mm -hmm. um, it also kind of highlights all the other issues that are happening along the coast because there's a lot of accusations happening um, around inheritance, jealousies, uh, you know, polygamous families. Um, so there's a, lo a lot of different factors which are creating this issue. Right. And the nyanya we are speaking about, ni nyanya koewe. Yeah, ni nyanyangu mm -hmm. mza babangu mm -hmm. on my father's side. Okay. Yeah. And now there's, we're hearing about your step, is it step siblings? Uh, causing some sort of, they're the ones raising the accusations about witchcraft? Yeah, it's my, some of my uncles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's the family story, the issues of family, it's not easy to kuzisema okay. openly. So he film ni kamba itatumika kama instrument ya watu kwa za kushare out stories out. Because it's something which is usually in-house. Yeah. Watu kuongea kuhusu mambo ya nyumbani wa ni kama ni siri flan. Okay. So at least hii story inaweza kuwa kama watu wakiona wanaweza kuanza kuwa na ile feeling ya kuwa tunaweza kuanza kuongelea stories za kwetu pia. So it will open up for many other families. Okay. Yeah. Okay. H how was it though shooting a documentary on on an issue like this one that is so personal to the family? I mean that must be very difficult. Na sahi atapia familia wanaichukuaji kuona sasa. Essentially umeweka shida zao uko nje. Umeonyesha dunia. Paka Oscars umeonyesha dunia kuna shida fulani mahali. Wanaichukuaje? Kwa kusema kweli haikuwa rahisi kuifanya manake kabla pia familia wawe radhi kuionyesha yani ku talk your story mm -hmm. ilibidi mpaka wajue kina Maya kwanza cuz my grandma mwanzo alikuwa haja open up. Mm -hmm. So ili bidi kwanza tum, tumweleze hii ni shukusu nini na sunajua pia yenye ni sensitive issue mm -hmm. ni mambo na waze kuwa kus, kusingiziwa kwa ni wachawi. Mm -hmm. So hiyo kusingiziwa hivyo pia waga si vizuri kwa mtu kwa zinafa pia kuna mambo ya security. So ilikuwa mpaka nyanya tukae nae tumweleze hii story ni kusu hivi mm -hmm. kunaenda hivi so hii story yako pia ina align na hivi vitu nini paka lipo open up sasa kwa familia ndo tukaanza ku shoot movie sasa okay. ndo maana imetuchukua around 6 years wow. so kuna kuenda kurudi kueleza hivi na nyumbani ni wapi nyumbani ni Kaloleni Kilifi County Kaloleni okay yeah. how, how did you two meet <laughs> <laughs> so we had uh, so as Chris and I were, were, were 
finding the story of Mekatili Liwamenza, we were interviewing a lot of elderly people, and the elders were telling us that this issue is happening along the coast, not only at the coast, Kisi, Muranga, there's other areas in Kenya that it's happening. Mm -hmm. And so then when we came back to Nairobi, um, we were looking for someone who could translate the Giriyama footage for this, these interviews. Mm -hmm. And we were put in touch uh, with Karisa, who at that time was living in Nairobi. He's also a musician, puppeteer. Um, and he came over, and as he was watching the footage, he was like, oh, yeah, this is happening to my family now. Yeah. My nyanya just received a Facebook post. And then that's how our journey began. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it took time, and we invested, you know, also um, whatever time needed, just also for us to really spend time with nyanya, for Kalaze also to get to know us. Yeah. Um, and we were without the camera in Kalolini, you know, for two or three weeks at the beginning. Okay. Um, just understanding also all the different dynamics. Okay. Um, because it's a, it's a bigger, it's through one family, but it's a bigger picture. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. And where is the issue now? Has it been settled or, um, you know, I, I have the discussion sort of moved forward? Uh, from that place, Mambo Yako Ajisas. Kwa familia yetu. Yeah, still discussions are still going on. Unaona familia yetu pia siile, unaona there was situations kama wale waze wengino wamepele kwa kwa hizo centers. Because mm -hmm. kuna familia zengino unapata mze kwa accused kama mchawi, alafu wanafukuzwa at the homestead. Okay. So inabida nenda kwa rescue center. So at least familia yetu, hii issue tunayongea lakini haijafika extreme. Mm -hmm. So it's something that bado tunaongea na tuna tunaomba Mungu atujalie tupate kama reconciliation kila mtu aje pamoja watu wa reconcile at least watu waweze ku, kuheshimisha kama zamani right yeah Maya as a producer and as a director um I I'm just trying to imagine it it could must be pretty hard to be capturing this for film and for a documentary and yet these are real lives right this is it's not a script. No. This is a real story. It's a real challenge. And did, did you ever at one point, you know, get worried about any sort of repercussions when people sort of settle in their minds like they're kind of going to be exposing us, quote unquote, to the world? And how do you draw that line then as a producer director um, of sharing this story? And maybe I even have to ask, what is your goal in what are you, what are you hoping to see mm -hmm. as you share this story? Mm -hmm and the reality of this is a real life and things could also go very wrong you know as we bring things to light um i think from the beginning it was for us especially for nyanya safety it was something that we really were going back and forth about um and also speaking together with the aunties who were like nyanya's main protectors her daughters um it was a conversation that 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 we we really we had a lot and it was something that was always in question um i think for us is that what what we used to do is we used to go and show Nyanya and the aunties footage, you know, every couple of months. Once we'd film something, we'd come back, be like, okay, and we'd watch it together. We also did it with the uncles, you know, okay, so this is what we're thinking, this is what we're doing. Um, and that's how then I think throughout we were transparent and we also then were given consent by the Nyanya to go ahead and make this film. Also, you know, in Kilifi County, more than 10 elders have been killed mm. every month. Wow. And as Carissa said, it's such a personal family story that these things are not shared outside. So I think for the Kamangos to open up their doors to us and to be able to take that risk um, is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that in the end of the day, this film is going to do so much in terms of like we already had a, a community screenings and kind of an impact campaign in Kilifi County. And when people were watching this film, like from elders, educators, youth, um, like people first of all couldn't believe that there was this film like which was from their backyard mm -hmm. and they were watching it and like people were crying they were breaking down in the in the room crying we had like a lot of youth who were the perpetrators who were also now watching the footage we had a lot of step kids who were also understanding the uncle's point of view so and then also like you know you have these k priests and fake priests who come around with their loudspeakers who are also causing tension okay you know so i think i think it's definitely opening up a big basket of things that have never been spoken about mm -hmm. but i think through that also it will be able to create change yeah and you're saying a lot of the perpetrators are youth in these communities a lot are because also you know like especially at the coast like there's a very high unemployment rate you have like a lot of border border uh, you know gangs and and things like that who have nothing else to do so if someone says yeah you know manyanya street whatever, I'll give you 5,000 shillings. 
um, you know, then they'll go and kill her mm. or things like that. So it, yeah. Yeah, they write letters for you. Yeah, they write yeah, the letters. Yeah, they drop you. it at your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. So I think a lot of it is youth, um, but because of other other reasons. Yes. There was a scene there in the trailer of some ladies saying, no, no, we will not go. Uh, what was that about, if you remember it? So those, I think the two, the two ladies at the end, um, those two ladies are Carissa's aunties and Nyanya's daughters. Okay. And that's for us, like this film, um, as Carissa mentioned, is that there were so many other families that we were also interviewing, but all of them didn't have the protectors. And these two aunties, essentially, along with Carissa, were really the protectors of grandma, which was very unique. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why this story for us was important. You know, wow. so you do have a very strong female voice sure, throughout sure. the film. Amazing. Um, well, this film, of course, was uh, scheduled to be released in Kenya in June 2020, but unfortunately was postponed because of COVID lockdown measures. But the film has so far played at quite a number of international festivals. Uh, give us a quick brief of, of where it's played so far. So we premiered uh, at the largest documentary festival in Europe uh, at, in last year, at the end of last year. And then it's kind of done its rounds. There's been a few. It's AFI docs. Um, it's been at the Melbourne International Film That's Festival. Similar. Uh, at Docs Barcelona, it's really it's it's done the rounds. Film Africa, which is in the UK, um, and so many more. Okay. And so we're really excited now that it's coming home. Wow, mm -hmm. fantastic! And uh, speaking of coming home, uh, tell us a bit about uh, where people will be able to watch this film, Carissa. So it will be tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's opening in cinemas yeah. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be showing at cinemas across the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Prestige, Westgate, yeah. uh, Motion Cinemas in Donholm, uh, Nyali Cinemax next Mombasa, week, yeah. Kisumu, Eldoret. Yeah. So wow. it will be available um, across the country. Yeah. And then also, um, we are now trying to figure out how can we also put it online down the road. So sure. that's what we're working on. But right now, it's in cinemas. Yeah. Uh, it will be in cinemas for yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. And uh, are you hoping to also work with government, partner with government? Are there any sort of discu discussions happening PNA Serikali as far as addressing this issue? Yeah, because uh, we have some stakeholders whom to make what kill us now, partnering with them. Mm -hmm. So work on board the government and other stakeholders and what to say idea up and cool it. So say at least to me on a good feedback from the sponsors and other corporates. Okay. Yeah. I just call Geza also is that we have like a, a like a intensive impact campaign that we're rolling out next mm -hmm. year. Okay. Um, and that's just really like hitting grassroots communities on the coast and Kisi where, where we'll begin. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that we're doing together with government and other NGOs and corporations. Wow. Wow, well done to you both and congratulations once again Thank on you. all the success so far. First film, <laughs> straight to the Oscars. Kabisa. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Santa and Santa. Uh, can people follow you guys on social media? Yeah, we are The Letter Kenya uh, on social media, uh, hashtag The Letter K E. Mm -hmm. And also the website where you can find all the information about the screenings is the letter.org. Okay, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Thank you guys so much for your time. God Thank bless. You. Thank you for having us. You're most welcome. All right, guys. Well, that's it. We've come to the end of the show today. Thank you once again for your company. Let's meet here tomorrow for Full Circle with Joyce. I have a special announcement to make for you tomorrow. And uh, I look forward to, of course, engaging with you. DJ Sadiq will also be in the building with lots of music for us. And as I go, let me remind you of an announcement by the National AIDS Control Council that if your HIV test is positive, you ought to visit a health facility and start treatment immediately. Taking your medication consistently reduces the amount of virus in your body promotes good health and prolongs life arvs are free in all government health facilities commercial hiv and corona 29 and covid 19 to our gbk <laughs> thank you guys so much we'll see you here tomorrow until then god bless you and have yourselves a wonderful day ahead ciao